All right. Shall we get started? Yeah. 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 Did you? Nobody else at the door, Matt. Um, I think a few more will filter in, but. Okay. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Um, I hope uh, for those based in the U.S. that you had a good Thanksgiving. Not too much turkey or food. Um, and uh, that everybody is uh, is safe at home or wherever you are. So it's uh, it's good to see um, a lot of people this week as well. So um, we uh, are gonna continue what we started last month. So for um, I don't know if there are any anybody who's uh, uh, who's here for their first uh, community call. Um, let me know and I can explain a bit more uh, what we're up to. Cool. This um, is my first call. Okay. Uh, well, I so we did uh, we uh, something new that we uh, did last month is uh, is getting people to pay to the the agenda, um, and uh, via a form. So we'll continue to do that and uh, um, to have a few uh, subjects uh, that you guys uh, would like to talk about. But um, you can also bring a subject on the fly. Uh, it's a fluid uh, agenda, and uh, and we uh, normally give uh, voices to uh, you guys, to the chapters, to get updates and talk about current projects, and uh, give a few updates on uh, um, on the work we've been uh, doing and exchange ideas. So um, thank you for for being here. So I'm just going to uh, share um, the like again like indicative agenda. And um, um, and and get started. Uh, Matt, Jen, or Glenn, did you want to add anything before we start? No, that sounds great. Yeah, just welcome to the few who are new to the to the call. I think Herman and Anne, maybe Joanna. Um, anybody else who's new, welcome. Um, all right, so I think uh, we can actually start with um, uh, what uh, we really consider the, the heart of the foundation is really the, uh, all the chapters uh, that um, you know, are working at um, spreading the word and, and, and having, um, you know, like we have cities or countries uh, that host uh, chapter events and uh, um, and definitely wanted to uh, um, thank you guys for your engagement. This is a, uh, you guys are doing a lot of, of, uh, of great work and great events and, uh, um, and wanted to hear from anybody who is part or is running a chat, have any update uh, to give. Can be anything. Hey, Paul here from the uh, Frankfurt chapter um, in Germany. Um, Paul, you froze. Is it just me or is Paul frozen? I think it's just Paul. Paul's frozen. I think you should move on for now. Okay, well, Paul, when you defrost, let, let us know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, any, any, anybody else uh, from the chapters uh, who wanna take over uh, when, before we get Paul back on? Vinicius, did you want to introduce Daniel? Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, um, from Brazil, we start to promote the fellowship program. And we, me and my friends from the research group, we start to promote expansion in universities and Twitter. And, and the people, they are very excited. They are asking so many questions about how to participate and get involved. We are so happy because of this, because the repercussion here is high many professors they are interesting about the program so we are so happy and daniel i i don't know he is online because he had uh, some troubles but he's from montreal he's he's brazilian also 
Uh, he is, has just finished his master at the University of Montreal, uh, Science of uh, Politics. Uh, Daniel, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Introduce yourself, please, to the community. Uh, all right. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm speaking directly from my car. Vinny said um, this meeting is happening and I couldn't miss it, so I'm here I am. <laughs> Very excited to be here. Um, Vinny has been telling me a lot about the movement. I, I started reading the book and I've been really loving the ideas, but just to a brief introduction of where I come from, I'm, I'm speaking from Montreal here in Canada. I was born here, raised in Brazil. Uh, I haven't been in touch with Montreal folks yet. Vinny put me in contact with some people uh, and it would be great to definitely join the group. But uh, I, I just finished my studies in political science. I've worked in development in, in, in Asia. I've been in Brazil. I've been in, working in Argentina with communities. And my most recent experience was working with uh, lobbying in, uh, in Washington, D.C. So this is definitely something that really uh, I've seen different types of markets and different the ways markets work and the different corporations how they work for themselves so radical markets has just been a fresh breeze um for me and 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 something to, that i really want to get into so it's a it's a pleasure to meet you all and uh, thank you so much for having me here and thank you Vinny, for introducing me welcome welcome daniel like this is a um this is great and uh, any questions yeah you have on uh uh, if you need to be connected with more people in, in Montreal or um, let us know. Uh, definitely a lot of folks uh, there as well. It would be great. <laughs> and, uh, Vinicius, I was actually, uh, I was uh, wondering if, um, if you had, um, like, uh, while advertising the fellowship program, um, did you have any specific questions or, like, things that came up like that or nothing really? No, no special. Uh, of course, we did a, a Portuguese version and Spanish to promote here. But after when the people, they want to know more in, uh, informations about the program, I send the official link to them. And of course, I explain how the movement it works and send videos and help them a lot. But thank you. Um, and, uh, and, and, and maybe uh, for those who are not super familiar with the fellowship uh, program, Matt or Jen, do you want to give a, a bit more details um, about, about it? I don't think Lawrence is on the call. Sure. So for anyone who's not familiar, the, um, I'll just say briefly, uh, check, go to our website and check out the, the fellowship program. Uh, it will be a, a approximately 10 week uh, uh, free program where we will essentially uh, identify and, and work with folks in the radical exchange community who are building public goods oriented uh, businesses or projects or, um, or arts or, you know, or engaging in arts projects. Um, uh, so we're going to bring together people from different, uh, different fields and connect them with the radical exchange network. Um, in as deep a way as we as we possibly can, and, and put together a, um, uh, a you know a sort of a interactive program that will allow you to sort of learn and network, and hopefully potentially find support for the work that you're doing, um, uh, in a way that will be you know compatible with uh, compatible with day job and, and and so on. So it's kind of like a public goods focused um, accelerator. Um, and applications are due December 13th. So if you're thinking about applying, um, uh, should do it soon. And that's it. Please, please don't wait. <laughs> um, yeah, like all the details on, uh, on um, um, like applications are on the page uh, that Leon and I shared uh, in, in the chat. Um, but if you have any questions uh, before submitting, um, we do have the email fellowship at radicalexchange.org uh, where you can ask like uh, any questions. Uh, we've had a lot of people um, engage with, uh, uh, with us before submitting applications to know, um, you know, like if their project like fits the, the fellowship, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and we have great uh, mentors who accepted uh, to be part of the um, of the journey uh, with the fellows uh, so thank you Glenn for example uh, to 
uh, to you know make, dedicate some time uh, to uh, these projects. I think this will be um, great, uh, a great part and a, a great curriculum as well uh, for the ten weeks. Um, so um, yeah. And it looks like Paul's back. Yes, I was going to say back to Paul. Yes, exactly. I will try again without video. Sorry for that. No problem. Um, yeah, um, we um, started a downtown stimulus project here in Frankfurt. Um, took a lot of inspiration uh, from the Boulder project, um, which, in my opinion, uh, had great results. Um, yeah, and we started by writing a, a little blog in German to uh, to appeal to the German audience and get a basis um, to build on. Uh, I think, yeah, the blog is uploaded to the Radical Exchange uh, website already. Uh, thanks to Max and Leon for that. Um, you, you can, you're free to use it if you want to share it to some uh, German speaking citizens. Um, Paul, do you mind giving more uh, details on uh, downtown stimulus for people who are not familiar yes. with uh, the project? Sure, sure, sure. sure. Uh, so downtown stimulus is a way um, to support your locals. Um, you have a, um, um, uh, you have a, um, sorry, I'm, I'm in, the, in, in German now. What's, what's the English word for? Um, Leon, any help for Paul? You, you, have, a, you have a money pool, um, and this money pool, uh, which would usually be decided over where it goes uh, by some centralized uh, institution, um, due to quadratic funding, gets now this. Uh, and um, no, 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 let me let me start from the top. Uh, the money pool um, gets split to different uh, uh, applicants for the for uh, that are applying to the downtown stimulus. Um, so it is a way to support your your local businesses and um, the, and <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I Matt, why don't you just explain it? Uh, I mean, yeah, we all know, know this, so yeah, uh, the the leaders can explain it. So yeah, yeah, it's so the I mean the uh, um, downtown stimulus is a program that was first done in in Colorado. Um, it's a way of supporting local businesses that have been harmed by COVID. Um, it uses quadratic funding to distribute a a matching pool um, between the different businesses. So it's a, um, so it allows anyone to contribute to the businesses that they want to support. And then, uh, using the quadratic funding formula allocates the matching funds to the products, to the, um, the projects that have the, or the businesses that have the widest base of support. So it's like a democratic way of, of structuring a, a philanthropic matching fund. Thank you so much, Matt. That was on point. Um, yeah, so we, we started this project uh, uh, with quadratic funding um, now and uh, prepare to uh, uh, get some people engaged, uh, preferably here in the city in Frankfurt, um, uh, but also uh, other, other uh, cities from the region. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to get some, some feedback to them, from them. Uh, we have a, a, a first information call uh, on the 16th of December about that. Um, and from what I've heard, the, the first responses are uh, very good and uh, we are pushing for it, yeah. Super excited about that work, Paul. Yeah, um, can't wait to see uh, see how it goes. I think it's a, I think it's a great initiative. Is the call on uh, December 16th uh, to present the project to local businesses or uh, or for just information? Um, the, the main problem at the moment is to get uh, good funding for the matching pool mm -hmm. um, because in Germany it's very difficult uh, for the cities to uh, distribute uh, money easily. It's a, it's a big process. Uh, um, and so we are trying to find ways uh, to get cities involved, but also uh, are open for um, 
for foundations or um, um, persons who um, would like to support. Um, the call is aimed at everyone who would like to participate, um, but we would be very happy um, if uh, a city uh, says, yeah, we want to do it. Um, um, and um, starts um, uh, starts this project with us. So interesting. I mean, this is if you have details, then uh, you know, feel free to uh, to share it uh, either now or or later. Um, that might uh, be of interest to uh, to people. Yes. And, sure. Um, did you talk? Uh, did you talk with um, with Kevin uh, from uh, uh, downtown stimulus itself uh, about about this project as well? Haven't talked to him yet. So it's a uh, it's a good point. I did. Uh, so you, I'm, I'm saying uh, that I'm mm -hmm. saying that because uh, we had uh, discussed uh, with him um, uh, at one point, like to do something in Italy uh, along the line of downtown stimulus, and uh, and he had a, um, a good point that like they had done the legal research uh, in the U.S. Uh, to yeah. be able to implement that, but not yet um, outside of the U.S. because it was, as you said, more complicated, like with public money and 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 so on. So um, that might be worse. I don't know if they yeah. went further in the uh, in the thinking, but uh, might be interesting. Yeah, I would love to to talk to him. Uh, okay. I think it's it's best if I text you after the call for for yeah. contact yeah, information. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Shall we do a quick yeah. update? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, li links are getting posted now uh, in the chat. All right, thank you. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, shall we do a quick update on the uh, European data? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Great. So the, um, you know, one thing that a lot of us have been following very closely is the latest rounds of, of um, legislation that the European Commission has been has been putting together to guide the sort of next several years of of the data economy in in Europe. Um, this is you know, there's a lot of interesting movement happening that could be influential not only in Europe but um, but around the world. And uh, if you were on the last call, one of the one of the things we were looking at was a um, a, a, a piece of uh, like a leaked to the public draft of the of a, uh, a, a European Union regulation called the Data Governance Act, which was uh, quite uh, quite similar or seemed to take quite a bit of inspiration from the from the work that we did on the uh, the Data Freedom Act, in that it uh, it allowed um, or it provided basically a framework for people to um, to come together into collective bargaining entities in order to get better, uh, get more value in exchange for their data or negotiate better terms uh, with respect to their data. And the a the, the public version was released, um, I believe, last week or so. Um, I'll point. Uh, oh, Leon just posted the link. Thanks, Leon. Um, and it's 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 quite interesting if you if you want to sort of parse the uh, parse this legislation. Th there's some interesting changes between uh, the version that was released uh, to the public and the uh, and the sort of you know unofficially leaked version. Um, the one of the main things that I think is interesting to to point out is that the the wording in the in the more recent version seems to focus a little bit more on. Uh, on data intermediaries as um, sort of entities to help individuals vindicate their individual rights, whereas the the leaked the language in the leaked draft tended a little bit more in the direction of of allowing individuals to delegate their individual rights and sort of uh, um, uh, cons you know consolidate the um, consolidate the negotiations in a, in a slightly more substantive way. 
Um, so this it's kind of a it's kind of a subtle distinction, but I think I think at this point about whether the whether the legislation allows the about what, whether the legislation allows data intermediaries to be entities to which individual rights are delegated and then uh, um, exerted on a collective basis versus whether the legislation uh, makes intermediaries uh, things that simply help the individual vindication of rights without allowing their delegation to the intermediary. This is a really important distinction. I think that the former you know, when the rights can be delegated, you can imagine these intermediaries looking a lot more like collective bargaining entities um, that could really change the balance of power in the data economy. Um, if they're just, um, if, if they're, you know, merely services that help individuals, uh, you know, figure out how to vindicate their individual rights, that it, that's a little, a little less powerful but nonetheless a step in the right direction so it's it, you know and, and none of this is final like it still has to go through the european um parliament and um uh and you know i don't and so on so but it's this is worth tracking and i think um you know, i'm curious if, if others have the call if others on the call have any thoughts about this distinction or um uh or yeah where where all this stuff in europe is going Maybe Glenn or Kalia, have you um, have you looked at this? Uh, have you thought about the that question of rights delegation? Um, I mean, I, I think the fundamental issue, Matt, that I, as I read it, has to do with an inconsistency with the GDPR. And uh, I always was uh, my number one criticism of the GDPR was always this individual versus collective thing, and um, I. Um, I thought for a time that maybe that could be finesse, but it seems like it's binding more than I had expected. And I ultimately think that I, I'm coming to shift my position on the GDPR to being sort of net overall critical on it rather than net overall positive, because I do think it's now starting to uh, impede the next steps that need to happen. So I think that that, that to me was one of the really um, one of the real learnings about it. Yeah, I mean the the way that I the way that I read the leaked draft was that I, I it was it was a pleasant surprise to me because it seemed like in that in that draft they were beginning this process of kind of finessing the GDPR to allow a more collective vindication of rights, which would you know sort of reflect the the nature of of, of data better than this strictly individualistic model. Um, but they appear to have, they appear to have backed off of that a bit, which I'm not sure. Um, I'm not, you know, I think to me, I think it's an open and interesting question, whether that's because it, you know, the rights delegation thing is fundamentally inconsistent with the GDPR or whether they just kind of lost their nerve and didn't want to do a more, um, you know, didn't want to try to, um, to, to finesse the legal landscape in that direction. Are they still planning any update to the GDPR or is that like just because um, they've had updated it like a little like maybe a year ago, right? Yeah, I, th I think there there are, um, I mean, there are um, new European laws coming down the pike that will um, uh, modify the GDPR and impact it, but not in its fundamental structure. Yeah. Um, Andreas, do you have any thoughts about this? It's heavily discussed. So um, um, I think there will be happening with something in this direction and there are some more concrete ideas on how to structure it. I have a German um, commentary about it. I can probably provide some insights later, um, but there are some, there are discussions going on. I think the, the problem is experienced by many at the moment. So I think there's a high pressure to update. 
Yeah. And as Kalia points out, my data global, which is one of the one of the most influential organizations in terms of uh, the European data landscape, um, has their their conference uh, next week. So if you're interested in um, you know getting getting more more involved, and it's also or, needed for for the data altruism idea. I mean, one big thing is this data altruism idea, and this is also depending on this changes so um there's also if you want this you also have to update yeah yeah and i think uh, i think that that the my data conference next week is probably going to be actually a pretty important site of conversation about this particular issue um Glenn, wouldn't the delegation of uh, voting power contribute to the creation of MIDIs, the MIDI idea, rather than yeah, that, that's the idea? We we, we yeah. call them data coalitions these days, but that's the exact point. And and this legislation, sort of, especially in the leak draft, seemed to be really positive towards creation of those, and then took a step back towards just saying, well, these will be individual, you know, facilitators of individual um you know rights exercise and that really the 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 only role that they play is that this puts some guardrails on them that will help establish trust in them um in playing that role i'm quite skeptical i don't know what matt thinks but i'm quite skeptical that that's going to do it very much i my, my guess is that uh you know some of these will be established probably with government subsidies in various places but i don't think that a a real organic marketplace in them is going to get a lot of support until they there's some power that comes with their role and the restrictions on them. Right, right. I mean, it's collective bargaining has this old fashioned uh, association with unions, whereas in going forward, it still is collective bargaining power that we're trying to establish, but we need a better model to describe how that's coming about, right? Yeah, and I think, I, I, so I, I, I agree with Glenn, I'm, I'm skeptical that these intermediaries are going to make a very big difference as uh, if all they are are facilitating the exercise of individual rights. Um, I think it's it's this delegation thing that would have been powerful that would have enabled them to really act like mids. And it's really, I think it's actually really interesting uh, to observe the um, the resistance to, or, or the sort of on discomfort with the idea of, of collective bargaining over data, um, particularly in, in these spaces of conversation about European data in particular, uh, because it's not like, you know, mo the European data policy community, it's not like the, these are not folks who are like necessarily uncomfortable with the idea of collective bargaining. It's more that at least the way I read it, and I think there should be, you know, th there's a, th I think there needs to be a little bit more focused conversation on this point, but there seems to be, um, just a uh, just a, a real belief that um, exercising these rights on a collective basis is not going to be good for the individual. There's just there's a real focus on you know individual rights, and that you know the idea behind all this reform of the data economy is to strengthen the individual. Um, and that's that's my position too. You know that's that's what radical exchange wants to and that's what we you know the idea of of collective bargaining for data that we're you know we've mapped out and so on that's what that's all about as well but the idea is simply that um that individuals acting atomistically acting alone without being able to you know uh meaningfully combine their rights and combine their their efforts and and occasionally uh influence one another's decisions through sort of democratic processes you know and bind one another through democratic processes 
you know, that kind of system is necessary for individuals to, um, to get the most out of their rights to their data. Um, and, you know, without that, if we just sort of think of everyone as disconnected individuals, then the market fails and none of the individuals uh, do very well. Um, and you know, they, they have sort of an insurmountable disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis the largest players, or even not, not even the largest players, you know, just vis-a-vis -vis any kind of organized uh, entity on the other side of the market. Um, but I think that this, yeah, this question about, you know, really what it, what it means for, for individuals to be able to maximize their, their, their interests and vindicate their rights um, you know, and whether that involves combining their rights with others is just a very, very, very deep question that I, th I think needs to be kind of brought out into the open more. Because, you know, my, my sense is, my sense is just that, you know, basically very well-intentioned people in the um, in, in the European data policy world, uh, um, I think you know pushed pushed this legislation back into a more uh, traditionally individualistic sort of a model. Um, and uh, it's not you know I totally I think I shared all of the goals with the the folks who 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 argued that way, but um, I just disagree so with it, the means. I think so on a call recently that Glenn was speaking, he named, um, he talked about the critical importance of the data aggregation and sharing in, a, in the context of AI. And I just, that shifted my perspective to go, oh, there's this other game going on about data for AI and the geopolitics, technopolitics of China. And that so far in the conversation today, sorry, I'm walking with a mask on, um, th that hasn't really been named. And I think it would be worthwhile writing something really short that makes that connection about the collective, collective data as a collective good for collective good AI and tells that narrative. So people just, cause I just, I had, I'm very close and I'm paying attention. And, and I was like, oh, like a little light bulb went out. So I think figuring out how we communicate that as a community is, is, is important to help that argument um, have greater chance of success. Yeah, thanks, Clea. That makes, I think that makes sense. Um, I'm not sure that, I don't know what you think, Glenn. I'm, I'm not sure that, that, um, that this argument totally depends on the China, on the you know, sort of, you know. I think it makes there. it a lot more compelling at this moment, yeah. Matt. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it depends on it, but I think, I, I do think that like people need to get that it's just not a viable option to just like not participate at all in the possibilities that come out of like all these new technologies that are coming. And that's just a non-starter. Like people, if people aren't there, they're just gonna have the default feeling that like, what the hell, let's just shut this whole thing down. Like, what is this whole thing? It's just awful. Mm -hmm. um, and that, they need to see somehow that that's just not an option because otherwise that's going to be the default place that their mind is going. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, thanks for uh, this update. There's definitely a lot uh, uh, more to read and, uh, and to, uh, to pay attention to in the, in the next, in the you know close future, I would say not next weeks. Um, so that's um, 
that's a good data uh, update. Um, anything else on the subject or um, I wanted to move on to uh, more of a quadratic voting uh, update slash projects that we're currently uh, preparing? All right, so um, maybe one, probably one thing. Sorry, yes. oh, no, no, go ahead. We are also engaged with the Living in EU um, community, which is uh, driven by the EU um, Commission, and eighty cities over all over Europe are participating. And the idea here is also connected to the data activities. There is a community data space. So at the EU. Uh, they talk about data spaces most prominently about the industry data spaces for the different industries, but also now the personal data space. And uh, there will be a community data space that um, deals about data in a community or city. And we are also a member of this community and there will be a meeting on the 8th of December where we will be participating. And so this is another dimension on the data topic, I think, that is quite interesting because it's domain, it's cross domain. And the domain would be an industry in the European um, talk, let's say. And so I'm very curious of what comes out here because there will be probably very high synergy potential between cities. And it could be a completely new way of for cities to collaborate and to let's say, do data collaboration. I like the, the term data collaboration. And so let's see what, what comes out here, but also quite interesting approach. Thanks, uh, Jen, for uh, sharing uh, the link. Uh, I was trying to find it, but could not um, for December 8 uh, um, discussion. So uh, that's, um, yeah, coming up. Um, all right, so I um, wanted to move on to, um, 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 someone asked about like um, for the agenda to talk more about quadratic voting. So if, I'm happy if uh, there are specific questions, uh, but to introduce the, uh, the subject, we also wanted to mention uh, one project that Alex uh, and the team uh, are working on uh, being, um, maybe I can let, um, Alex, uh, introduce it to like not ruin the surprise, uh, or Matt, if you want to say something before. I'm talking about the governance tool uh, for the foundation. Yeah, so uh, um, Alex, it would be be great if you could if you could talk about this. You know, we're we've been doing thinking about uh, how to uh, essentially how to involve the Radical Exchange, the global community in the in the decisions that the Radical Exchange Foundation makes a, a bit more um, in a bit more vital way, and uh, in the service of that goal, have uh, have done uh, done some pretty original thinking. I think about how to uh, how to just structure uh, sort of open democratic organizations in general, and um, uh, we're working with with Alex to build. Uh, build some pretty cool software to, to help facilitate that. So Alex, it'd be great if you could say a little bit about what you've been working on. You're seeing like it. There. Oh. That must, is that a different Alex? It's a muted Alex. Okay. Um, all right. Well, maybe on on the next call, maybe Alex can introduce his work. But in in a, in a nutshell, it's um, uh, we're building sort of a, a a web app that will enable enable people from the radical exchange community to sort of uh, distribute voting credits um, and to one another and participate in a polis conversation that will sort of structure a uh, a quadratic voting ballot. And then in the in the final step of the process, the people that have uh, you know have voting credits will um, you know which have been distributed by other members of the community uh, will then vote on on that ballot, sort of setting Radical Exchange Foundation's uh, high level agenda uh, in a quadratic voting process. Um, so we're we're really looking forward to um, 
uh, to making this tool available, not only for Radical Exchange Foundation, but hopefully as something that other kinds of open democratic oriented organizations can play around with. Um, and yeah, I don't want to I don't want to give ourselves too many deadlines, but we're we're getting there. It should be should be pretty close to pretty close to ready to 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 play with publicly in the next uh, um, you know let's call it thirty to sixty days. Um, yeah, and uh, and and the goal is uh, is not to you know constantly vote, but I think it will be like um, I mean thinking about including the whole um, radical exchange community in the decisions um, that are made by the foundation for, you know, some goals and priorities and, and projects uh, to handle. So um, like starting small and, and we're calling it an experiment as well, because um, there's definitely going to be iteration on uh, the process. And, um, and one thing that is very exciting, um, because most of the quadratic voting platforms so far are, um, you know, blockchain based or like, I mean, this has nothing, no token, no, like nothing, like no governance. Um, I mean, token as in like blockchain based. So very excited about that as well to uh, uh, include everybody on, uh, on that. So, um, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so I don't think Alex is back, but we'll, we'll show you more uh, things. It's a work in progress. So I just wanted to um, mention um, the project because this is something that um yeah like alex and the team are uh working on uh heavily um one so as, as a very fluid agenda i uh just wanted to um go back to uh the chapters and uh, and also mentioning that something coming up as um uh with the imaging and angela with here uh today uh is uh the uh, creation of an internal newsletter um, about like chapters. So it's not just, um, you know, these calls that allow a chapter to um, give an update on the fly, but also like a written um, uh, newsletter. So to be defined and like probably not monthly, maybe bi-monthly, uh, I mean, every two months, so probably not bi-monthly, but um, uh, to, um, to be able to highlight uh, some chapters and um, and 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 give an update on upcoming events, and that will be done uh, by, um, you know, like we're gonna get the information from the chapters uh, with a form uh, that you can fill in if you have like something to share uh, within this newsletter uh, and uh, uh, and more. Um, more insights so you can really capitalize on context between uh, chapters but also on uh, examples because chapters are very different um, some are very active in terms of events some are more like you know as a think tank uh, like organized as a think tank uh, and so on and so forth I mean that's not uh, one chapter that looks like the other which is uh, amazing and um, and yeah, so Angela, I don't know if you have other um, things to uh, mention. Um, no, I just wanted to say hi to everybody. Um, I'm Angela Corpus, joining the team as uh, the community contact um, in addition with Fanny. So hello. <laughs> I just realized we did not introduce yeah. <laughs> you. I'm so sorry. It's OK. <laughs> this is Angela. <laughs> Thank you for introducing yourself. It's OK. Um, Actually, if Angela could just say a few more words about herself, I think she's going to be such an important contact for so many people. I think that would be really helpful. Um, sure. So I come from a nonprofit background, um, have done a lot of social media work, also had previously worked in advertising. I got connected um, with this community through Manny, who had previously uh, worked on this. I'm very big in the activist space. Um, and we had been working with a mutual aid uh, group in Brooklyn. So um, yeah, I, I have a lot of my interests have compiled to really lead me into, uh, you know, really what this was what this group is about. So I'm really happy to be here and to join. Super happy to be working with you. Thanks. <laughs> Same. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, let's um, going back. Um, one thing we wanted to also uh, mention uh, in the community is that um, Gitcoin uh, is starting their 
uh, eighth round of um, um, quadratic funding grants uh, to date. Uh, so this is uh, another way to support uh, projects, uh, mostly blockchain uh, projects, um, and uh, but was important to uh, to mention this new round. Uh, and that's all for me for now. Like, but I, I if anybody else, um, you know, would uh, I know like nobody ever wants to talk when I say everybody. Anybody has any updates? But um, but this is the time I think uh, if um, if you have an upcoming event or something you want to throw on the agenda. No. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, if no one's got yeah, any, we can, anything uh, else to contribute, let's jump off 10 minutes early. Yeah. And um, we can all enjoy the 10 minutes. And, um, but uh, I will, um, I will publish uh, all the links. Um, there have been a lot of links uh, uh, shared today. So uh, I will, um, I will, uh, I will do. Oh, um, and Graven. Yeah, please, Graven. If you want to talk a, a, a little bit about like GeoWeb uh, uh, projects, that's also a very interesting project. If you want to tell us I mean, a bit more about you. it. Yeah, I, I, I'm always uh, hesitant to self promote, but since you mentioned Gitcoin, um, I'm working on a project called the GeoWeb. It's essentially like uh, an AR metaverse that we are administering digital land parcels with salsa. Um, so I've been in contact with Matt, had a conversation with Fanny and Leon. Um, so our Gitcoin grant went live. I'll drop it in the, the uh, in the chat. Um, and if you want to check it out, um, lots more um, detail included on the grant page. Thank you. Thanks, man. Also, I just want to say I'll be speaking next week at a webinar. Um, Radical Tech, Good in Tech, and then the panel's Radical Tech uh, with a few others. That should be interesting. It'll be maybe partially in French from some, but put the link also in the, so that's on the 9th, December 9th. What does that mean partially in French? <clears throat> well, it's with um, the Plurality University and mm -hmm. Sciences Po. Um, I think it's, it's with a bunch of partners. It's all basically based in French. I don't know if some of the others are going to be speaking in French. I'll be speaking, I think, in English. <laughs> so right, if anybody wants to check it out, it's free and easy. Yeah. Thank you. And Kelly, Kelly you wanted to, um, I think you wanted yeah. to. Yeah. So I'm um, I'm organizing a conference in the first week of February called the Thoughtful Biometrics Workshop, and we're bringing to bi together biometric scientists, identity management people, and civil society folks concerned about biometrics to like be in dialogue with each other. So it's thoughtfulbiometrics.org is the website. And it may, you know, given the AI themes here, it may be interesting for some folks to engage. Great, we'll add that to, uh, to the minute with the link. Uh, thank you. Well, I must say it's exciting to see, uh, even if they're still online, there's uh, a lot of uh, very important discussion happening uh, end of year and, uh, and uh, early um, 2021. So um, let's hope, we'll hope for better year next year but uh in the meantime this uh, um yeah so i think we can end uh, the call now uh, i know it's a december call but it's like really early december so still a lot to uh, get done uh, in december but uh, i'm sure we'll uh, we'll talk more uh, individually with uh, all of you uh, i know i know that oh Matt, I, I think lucas uh, wanted to say a word about the policy fund yeah thank you so much so we just had a oh, sorry, pandemic policy fund uh, yeah, it was a student-based conference, so everything student-led, student-organized. Uh, we had about 1,000 uh, participants and 400 uh, submitters back in October, and now with the winners, we're putting together a policy sprint. So we're looking for 
uh, anyone who can mentor in public health, economic equity, criminal justice, tech, or voting. Uh, we're also putting together a conference coming up uh, December 12th, Students Improving Schools. If you have any ideas on how we can improve education, so no uh, credit funding, uh, participatory budgeting, we'll actually be using QV for allocation of uh, the prizes. And then uh, next year in February, we're gonna have an education policy thon, same idea, as well as uh, a planned triple helix conference. So trying to put together um, academia, government, and uh, business specifically tech to see how we can uh, have a more cohesive recovery. And this is again, um, very participatory, crowdsourced and open to anyone. Thanks. Great, and that's a lot of dates. So all the details are in the link you, uh, you shared? Uh, yeah, so that is just the, the sign up link um, on my iPad, but I'll, I'll drop the uh, general link in just a second. Thank you. Thanks. And this is also my uh, first meeting. So thank you all so much. Yeah, welcome. Thanks for joining. One thing I, I will shell from my Microsoft role is that if, if anyone's a data scientist out there interested in sourcing uh, images for machine learning applications in a data dignified way, um, uh, check out Microsoft Trove. Uh, it's a project that subsidizes uh, data acquisition in a way that respects and uh, uh, compensates the data creators. Microsoft Trove. Yeah. Uh, we have a question uh, probably for you. Uh, Glenn, I think the question uh, in the chat from Alexei is, uh, is for you. Like, how do you plan to use uh, 60, around 60K free data sets that are already available and don't need to be accepted via GDPR or else? Um, I think this is a very interesting question. Um, there is a lot of data um, in things like common crawl and other data sets that are um, Creative Commons licensed and that are being used by a lot of the big platforms in pretty commercial ways. I have some real questions about like what, what's, how legitimate that is. And I think it's something that the community should probably reflect on. I, I don't know if you have any comments on that, Clea. No, I don't know. There's a, there's these large scale. A, there, there's basically a huge rush to these large scale AI models, and all of them are using data sets that are basically Creative Commons, and they're using it commercially. And I just don't I don't understand how that flies. But it sounds like someone should write Lawrence Lessig and ask him. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's like yeah. that sounds terrible. I yeah, I mean, say... yeah. Anyways, Matt, you can reply. Um, I think there's an interesting, I mean, in, in this is US centric, but in, in US law, I think a lot of this hinges on the, on the fair use doctrine, the idea of transformative fair uses. Like even when things aren't Creative Commons licensed, you can, you know, people are feeding them into models under, uh, under fair use, um, under the sort of fair use exception to copyright. Um, but fair the, use doesn't uh, include uh, commercial use. Uh, it, it, it doesn't include any commercial use. And it also, um, I mean, obviously there's, there's a certain amount of allowing for, for, you know, use of the ideas without use of the text, but a lot of these, you know, very large models, the whole point is they have an enormous number of parameters that effectively allow for memoization. So I, um, I think it's a very interesting question. Yeah, uh, do you plan to do some uh, collective effort to understand what they are all about, um, like categorize in terms of public goods, uh, how can these uh, data sets and trained models can be used to improve something? Uh, because they are like, uh, they need the collective effort, like even I cannot, cannot really like figure out what they're all about. Um. I, 
I mean, that's a very interesting question. I mean, I guess that that's exactly the sort of thing that some sort of data cooperative or data cooperative should be doing. Yeah. I'm glad we opened a lot of, uh, and, of subjects and did not, uh, you know, hang up 10 minutes yeah. ago. So. And fair use doesn't rule out all commercial uses, Glenn. We can chat about it afterwards, but there's a- oh, it doesn't. No, yeah. All right, well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, everybody. Um, and uh, um, definitely a lot of work and that's what we're here. So this is uh, exciting and, uh, um, and uh, let's, uh, let's touch base on, uh, on all of that. And uh, for now, have a good evening, afternoon, morning. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.